I am here with Houston Huddleston. I hope I pronounced that right. Yep. And he is the founder, head, main guy here of the Restore the Enterprise D project. Mm -hmm. And uh, been a long time trying to get this interview. We missed you last year at Austin Comic Con, and you're a tricky man to catch. It's, it's about time that we got together, and I've missed you. I, I haven't even met you, and I missed you. So, yeah, that's... Uh, I feel special. I feel so special. So, for... People who don't know, mm -hmm. give us a little rundown on uh, the project and what it is that you're doing here. Well, basically, what happened was I found one of the bridges that was made by Paramount, and it was a uh, it wasn't the original set because they blew that up at the end of Generations, where you see the ship yeah. crash. Kaboom. That was the original set that they shot on for seven years, and so they built ours in the late '90s, like '98, and they built ours the same time they built the. Vegas one, which uh, was an exact duplicate with a few little changes here and there. Well, I found this because it was sitting outside for five years. Uh, Paramount didn't care about it, and they uh, and somebody who worked at Paramount told me about it, and I said, "Wow, it's the entire bridge of the Enterprise." I, I flipped out, and I the, the warehouse owners said, "Yeah, it's going to be destroyed next week. So uh, if you want it, do something with it now." and so I just had it shipped to my house originally in the backyard because uh, the thing is, it was so huge. The thing was, it's 50 feet long and it's 25 feet wide. So there were these giant metal pieces. If you look on our website, newstarship.com, you'll see the original pictures yeah, that I took. Yeah, it was pretty rough. Oh, it was horrible. It yeah. was horrible. But it was all plexiglass and metal, so it couldn't be broken down unless you just wanted to destroy it. So then I went to Vegas and I asked some of the original Star Trek people, Ronald E. Moore... Brandon Braga, Brent Spiner, William Shatner. If I do this, will you guys help me? Because nobody knows who I am, but they all, all Trekkies know who you are. And miraculously, they all agreed, including Denise Crosby's here. She, yeah. She's one of our biggest supporters. She loves what we're doing because we're not just restoring the bridge to say, hey, we got a bridge, isn't that cool? We're turning it, we're bringing it into the 24th century. We're making it all real touchscreen computers and that you can touch them and the programming will be that you can fly the ship basically and it'll be an interactive educational experience that you could take to a museum an entire classroom of kids could sit on the bridge work the computers and learn about space and science and math and uh, entertainment and geology and uh, any of the stations that you saw engineering they could all their minds will just explode with knowledge and technology and also entertainment that there's nothing like that in the world as far as i can find yeah there's really not and that's that's what i think it's a pretty cool idea i know i would love to have a bridge in my house <laughs> with fully functional this would be off i don't know if you ever heard of the, we're gonna do a little plug here for the artemis bridge i ship. know the artemis guys how yeah. cool yeah. would it be to have this and play artemis that would be epic that, we, that would be that, that was one of the first things we talked about because uh, the easiest way would have been to take Artemis and then just put it on the screens and all that. There are a few problems with that because the parameters and restrictions of it being... The, number one, CBS is letting us do this. Right. That's a big thing uh, because they know we're not going to do something stupid with it. We're not going to do something offensive or illegal with it. Right, right. And that we've got all the original guys behind us on it. So... We have to have them pass everything that we do. Uh, but they're letting us do this. They're letting us do weddings on the bridge. They're letting us display it. The next big step is making it interactive. Now, the thing with Artemis, though, and the thing with what we've got, each one of these computers has to be uh, have its own station exactly as it was made on the show. That's the one thing we've got to do. It's got to be Elkar's screen, as Mike Okuda created, like what you see. Except it's got to be like Elkar's point two, because most of the stuff 
didn't really make sense unless you were on the show. Right. Because it was supposed to be instinctive. And you can't have a classroom of kids on the, the, bread, the bridge of the set and make it frustrating and make them, I don't understand. They'll go and start crying and then they'll pull out their phasers and they'll all kill us. Um, so we have to figure something out that, that works for what we have and also is interactive and also has the spirit of the LCAR system and have original actors appear on the screen. Say you run into a ship uh, and you'll uh, into a Klingon, for instance, right. and then you have one of the original actors who played a Klingon on the show, or you have Sir Patrick Stewart, Jean-Luc Picard talking to you as your admiral, uh, instructing, or uh, Bill Shatner instructing you for the Kobayashi Maru scenario. I mean, it's limitless, and all these people have supported us and are gung-ho about it, and if we get the money we need and the support from CBS, it can happen. Yeah, that would be epic. I mean, because it would be really cool. I mean, like here is this is the helm, I right. believe. The con, con the and con, ops. Con, con and ops. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. called helm in uh, the next gen. I, I'm more, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm more, I love next gen, but when it comes to the ships, I'm definitely more of an uh, old school guy. I love the Excelsior. Yeah, that's my favorite ship of all time. I, this Excelsior design is brilliant. I love that. Uh, uh, I'll tell you something else. It, it was called the Enterprise B, was the Excelsior, I believe. Yeah, Excelsior class. Yeah, yeah right. The refit of it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to tell you something else. When we rescued this set, we also rescued one other set. We have the original series bridge, the Kirk awesome. bridge Very as well. Nice. We're still not sure whether it was the one made for uh, the Enterprise episode Mirror Darkly. Or if we don't, we know it wasn't uh, relics, and we don't think it was trials and tribbles. We think it was mirror darkly. We're still not sure. Which was still a pretty, pretty spot on replica. Oh man, they yeah, yeah they had Doug Drexler and Michael Kuda and Herman Zimmerman working on that show, so it, it it was dead on. They had the blueprints, and we've got those blueprints, and, and we've got the actual pieces from it. In my garage, I've got the the floor to Kirk's chair, <laughs> sitting awesome. up, uh, leaned up, yeah. I uh, just love that you were talking about a mirror darkly, which is one of my favorite. And we just off camera we had two uh, girls in mirror darkly yes, uniforms. Yes, exactly. And it's like, ah! Yeah. I love no, it when a plan comes together. That was awesome. That was awesome. It's a shame they never did a mirror universe for uh, Star Trek Next Gen. They did yeah. it in the comics, but they never yeah. did. Uh, I, I think that's really well. Did Voyager? I don't think Voyager did one. Did they? No, I guess they didn't. They did in uh, DS9. They did DS9. Yeah. They did Enterprise. Yeah, uh, yeah. Next gen and Voyager. Shame. <laughs> yeah, right. But we still love it though. Mm -hmm. So if people want to donate, where can they go? They go to newstarship.com, and uh, you can get T-shirts. You can get hats. Well, this is one of our shirts on the Swag. front. Swag. It says, uh, "Captain, I saved the bridge," and on the back it says, "Shut up, Shut Wesley." Shut up, Wesley. I love it. I gotta <laughs> tell you too. When I first uh, met Will Wheaton. Actually, it's the only time I met Will Wheaton. Oh, all the many times I met Will Wheaton. No. Um, yeah. And it was at the, uh, I think it was at the Austin, no, maybe it was the New Orleans con where I met him. But um, anyway, I, I, I was talking to him, and I, and I was telling him about our bridge restoration. He'd actually heard of us. And he said, uh, and as I was leaving, he saw the back of my shirt. He fell out of his chair laughing when he saw awesome. Shut Up Wesley. So I said, man, you can't get cooler than that. Yeah, he's... he's Pretty good guy. He's got a pretty good sense of humor. On oh him. yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, the Wesley Crushers yeah. on on uh, yeah Big Bang Theory and all yeah. that. We done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and then uh, of course that episode, Brett Spiner shows up. Oh yeah, I remember when we used to blow these things up, and he rips it out of the package, and now now Brett Spiner's on Sheldon's enemy list. Yeah, uh, that was pretty brilliant. <laughs> but yeah, I know uh, when uh, we talk. Well, we talk not to you personally, but we talked to Larry. Nimichek, yeah, amazing other, guy. Yeah, really awesome dude uh, at Austin Comic Con, and mm -hmm. he was saying that pretty much the entire TNG cast that was there was getting behind y'all, and so it's good good to know that the the cast is supporting it, CBS is supporting it. So it's a win win. I mean, uh, it's the most positive, amazing thing I've ever been involved with, and I think a lot of these people. Brent Spiner said to me that uh, it was. The, uh, he said something to me I've never heard another actor say to me personally ever. He said, what can I do for you? 
uh, and my jaw dropped. I didn't know what to say. Um, so yeah, I and somebody said, "Dude, when when Rich Spiner says, what can I do for you? Have an answer. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, sit in that chair and yeah. do, do a cut a promo oh, yeah, for me. Do that. And, do that. and if you would just sign this check. Yes, exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we're probably going to see them at the Vegas Con. Awesome. I think yeah. they're all going to be there, and hopefully we'll be able to get them to sit in the chairs. Yeah, sadly, we we do not have the funding to go to Vegas. We're working on getting funding to go to more of the big shows, but that's definitely one I really want to check out because it is the biggest Star Trek it con is. in the world. It is. I never got to go to the experience. so This is the yeah. closest you're going to get to the yeah. experience because there's no, there's no other next-gen set out there for fans to sit in. And people sit in this for free. Mm -hmm. That's the one rule we have, and we're never going to change that rule, because the Vegas experience used to charge you $25 to sit in the chair. And that just infuriated me. I didn't have the 25 bucks, right. and I, I felt it was really insulting to fans. So the one thing, no, it's absolutely free to sit in the chairs and take photos. Yes. Yes. I, as, as well, as I just said. Black Canary on the bridge. Yes, I exactly. Love that. I, it's, it's, we're very passionate about this because this is a total labor of love uh, for us and for everyone involved in this. Um, and yeah, it's, if, if people can afford donations, Trekkies are good people. Trekkers, Trekkers, Trekkie, whatever, man. It's Trekkies. Yeah, Gene I know. should know. He invented the damn exactly, thing. Exactly, right. So. Uh, and, but, you know, it's, they're good people. If they can afford it, they'll pay. If they can't afford it, they won't. And it's the positive energy, and we feel that really we're trying to bring Roddenberry's vision in some small way to life by doing things right and, and having a very positive attitude. I'm glad. I'm glad that you're staying true to Gene. I I'm, I won't get too into it, but I know that's a lot of people feel Star Trek's not really doing that lately with some of the newer movies. But let's become an action film, and that's yeah. okay. Hey, look, here's the thing, and I, I've said this before. It put Star Trek as a brand back into the mainstream. Oh, yeah. And it brought a whole bunch of new fans. And it's like the Doctor Who. People will say, oh, the new Doctor Who, blah, blah, blah. It'll bring but it'll bring them into the world of Doctor Who. Yeah. Star I, Trek. I'm kind of guilty of that because uh, my first Doctor was Chris Eccleston. Mm. I mean, I had seen it when I was younger with Tom Baker and all that, but I never really, never really good got into it. I never got it until I was older, so. Tom I Baker I, I was cool, though. Tom Baker was awesome. So I, I guess I'm kind of guilty like that, but at the same time, I, I, you know, I was like, I see Star Trek as like, it's our future and our potential, and to see it reduced to pew, 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 it kind of upsets me just I a bit. I know, I know. And I, I know some some of the TNG cast kind of feel the same way. And, it's a, it's look, like, uh, yeah, the heart of it was gone. That's yeah. the bottom line, but... As an action film, it's a fun action yeah. movie. And I have uh, nothing against action movies. But I know. We, we can keep the spirit alive, man. Keep the spirit alive. Hopefully there'll be a TV show soon that has the name Star Trek and has Roddenberry's vision. Well, we don't want to eat any more of your time. We yeah. probably went way over already. But Sorry. It's been awesome talking with you. Me too, man. Thank you. And we'll hope to see you around and hope it gets fully restored, and we're looking forward to it. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> We'll